Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. Thanks so much for being here, for being subscribed if you are. And if you're not, go ahead and hit that button. And if you're listening to this on YouTube while you're at it, hit that like button. It's like walking into the room and hitting that light switch. We just want to go ahead and brighten up the place. So let's get into this podversation. I've been waiting to talk about this. I'm just going to talk a little bit about it because there's a lot of details about this chick. And I'm going to put links to the videos in the description box from Chronicle Speaks. And she broke a lot of it down but this story is one that just really touched me not because I follow this chick I had never followed her but I heard about her months ago actually and if I can find that video I'm going to put a link to that in the description box from Nick at Night because she talked about this situation before this arrest happened recently this social media entrepreneur icon. I wanted to talk about this because I just have a thing, especially when it comes to people who are African-American. Look, I know there's a lot of schemes and scams and scammers on social media who are out here to take people for what they have and and showcase a lifestyle that they either are living fraudulently or they're not really living, but they want to act as if they are. Because there are a lot of people who rent planes, who rent time to take pictures on planes that they're never even flying in. I should say private jets, not so much planes. Anybody can ride in a plane, but a private jet. Um, they are renting these lavish mansions, renting these amazing vehicles, or just renting time to take photos in these amazing mansions or renting time to take photos with these amazing vehicles and taking images with wads of cash that they either have or they're renting that too. Like, listen, people are doing it all to try to show what they either have or don't have, but to bilk people out of what they are worth. And you have so many African-Americans who do it and they target other African-Americans. They have their marks, you know, and it's just very unfortunate because <clears throat> I have never, like I said, follow this, um, this person I never knew anything about her prior to the news that I heard about her. It probably maybe was less than six months ago or maybe around six months ago about some allegations about her getting upset about someone exposing her on social media for being a fraud and her ways of how she has done some things with regards to a home that she allegedly was supposed to have given to someone, but it turns out she didn't really give it to the person. She had her name on the home. And when they asked her to remove her name from the deed, she got upset. And then she said, well, look, um, I'm going to sell the home and I'm giving you a month to find another place to live. But she showcased her giving someone this home on social media to try to act as if she was extremely charitable. And also using money that she got in a settlement for a workplace injury and not putting that on Front Street, not letting people know about that. And even though there's nothing wrong with using money that you receive, which is not illegal to get money in a settlement or even a lottery or some windfall that you may have received and using that to invest in other things. You would be foolish not to do that because you want to use your money to make more money if you possibly can instead of just blowing it and spending it that you, you can never get back. But yet, not telling people about that, it makes you look fraudulent because if you're trying to showcase yourself as this extremely savvy business business success and entrepreneur and you came from nothing to something, a rags to riches story by way of business versus by way of a settlement, then it makes you look like you are a liar. And so this is basically something that she has done and she's not alone. Now, I'm not saying <laughs> that she is not alone in terms of attempting to have someone taken out of here, 
but she's not alone in people who expose, not, not expose, who put themselves out on social media as being successful in business, but yet you don't really have the success that you claim to have, but you are showcasing to other people that you do in the hopes of them spending their money with you. And that's how you make more money. So these people who are out here teaching people how to create courses and charging people a lot of of money to do that, or even not even a lot of money, but they get a lot of people and that is how they make a lot of money. It's not a hard thing to do. It's pretty easy to create an online course. You record the videos, (laughs) you get a platform to house them on, a paywall, people buy it, and then they get access to it. You don't need to pay someone for a course to teach you how to make a course, but they will sell that in terms of, well, this is a lifestyle that I'm living, and if you follow my ways and do it like I tell you to do it, then you can live the same lifestyle too. They play on the emotions and the mindsets of people who are looking for a way out and a way up. And that's what bothers me, especially people who are African-American because they are targeting other African-Americans. And they already know that a lot of African-Americans do have a harder way to go. And they are looking for opportunities to get out of the place that they are in, that they're struggling in. And then you go to them and you take what they have and maybe not take, but you you take some emotion from them that they are feeling that they connect with and you make them feel like they're in a community and then you sell them on all this stuff. And it's really, when you get it, it's, it's bull crap. So when I heard this story, I thought about that because I've seen that over the years, I've experienced some of it, not to that extent, but It's amazing the things that people will say and do. And then when you find out the background, it's like they really didn't have it like that. They have learned how to play the game and they may they may have a great gift of gab or they definitely may have money and some success, but they don't have it the way that they're telling you that they got it. So it's not honest. It's not honest. So this couple Ashley and Joshua Grayson, they're under a federal indictment for their higher attempt to take out some people and putting them to sleep forever. So they've been charged and an indictment against the two was filed in the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Tennessee. Now, this story comes from Atlanta Black Star, and it alleges that the Graysons contacted and paid someone in Tennessee to take out another person forever. Neither the person who was contacted nor the potential victim were named. However, investigators determined that the Graysons had been in touch with someone to plot the takeout between August 2022 and September 11th of 2022. And they have pictures of some of the pleadings, which are the legal documents that are filed in court. So they show the indictment, count one, from on or about August 26, 2022, and continuing until on or about September 11th, 2022, in the Western District of Tennessee and elsewhere. The defendants, Ashley Grayson and Joshua Grayson, in all caps and bold, together with others known and unknown to the grand jury, did knowingly and intentionally conspire to use and cause another to use a facility of interstate commerce to wit, a cellular telephone with the intent that the takeout of DH, and it says a real person known to the grand jury, be committed in violation of the law of the state of Mississippi. And as consideration for the receipt of and promise an agreement to pay money and other items of of value, I'm sorry, the print is a little small as I'm reading it, all in violation of Title 18, 
United States District Code Sections 1958. Both Ashley and Joshua Grayson are entrepreneurs and content creators. In 2021, Ashley Grayson amassed a tremendous amount of attention when news spread that she earned $1 million from her online business, Digital Course Recipe, less than an hour after she launched the course. Before her course launch, she founded a credit repair business in 2017 that she said was her saving grace from financial troubles. Many people who followed her were inspired by her rags to riches story. So again, she got a lot of people in. Again, I didn't follow her, so I don't know what type of content that she was sharing or posting. But I'm assuming she was making so many people feel like there's hope making people feel like this is someone that looks like me. If she can do it, I can do it too. And she acts like she cared about them and and all of that other stuff. So I'm sure that she shared a lot to make people feel emotionally connected to her. And that's how it worked for her. So numerous followers of the pair are familiar with their proposal, which went viral. R&B singer Monica even performed at the couple's lavish engagement party on a rented yacht. The couple also frequently posted pictures and videos of expensive trips and activities. In 2022, allegations began to circulate that Ashley Grayson's business success associated with her digital course was a scam. It was further purported that Grayson was actually awarded $1 million after losing a finger at work. That same year, Grayson sued financial coach Derricka Harwell for defamation, alleging that Harwell posted a comment under one of Grayson's Facebook posts that was false, defamatory, and injurious. The suit states that Harwell's posts made people believe that Grayson stalked and harassed her, which permanently damaged Grayson's personal reputation online and around the world. So it was a social media post and Derricka posted under the post and it said, child, I had to get legal and file a whole restraining order on this one. It ain't what you think. I promise. Be careful who you show admiration to, sis. I bet a million dollars this ain't it. So she knew some stuff. okay, And that's listed as an exhibit in the federal indictment. It says, so while the indictment does not fully name the potential take out victim, it does identify the person by the initials DH. While some people online were shocked by the news, considering that the Graysons are now expecting a child, others say they weren't convinced by their journey to success. And so they in this article show a tweet by someone that says, I've been following this Ashley Grayson situation for months and it's crazy how it's playing out. Another one says, Ashley Grayson is getting everything that she deserves. Whew. I'm so glad God gifted me with discernment because I really thought something was wrong with me when I couldn't find myself happy for her and all her quote unquote success. So, you know, that's, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this, because again, I never followed her, so I didn't know anything about her, but I know that there are a few people, not many, because I don't really follow many people on social media. I just know that a lot of social media is smoke and mirrors. And that's one of the things that kind of gets to me, not that it stops me from posting. I'm, I'm an extreme introvert. I'm just not one of these people that cares to showcase my life and everything that I have going on all the time. Some people, that's their wheelhouse and they enjoy it. And that's fine if they do. But when I see people like this Ashley Grayson personality type that are always talking about how much money they made or how successful they are, there's nothing wrong with being grateful for the success that you achieve. But when you're on social media and you're literally saying, you know, and sharing and and you're comfortable with people knowing that you allegedly made $1 million in 40 minutes, which is for most people, even even for the wealthiest of the wealthy, you don't hear stories like that of them making that much money in that short a period of time. It is like hitting the lottery. It's It's just next to impossible for most people. But To sell other people on what you claim that you were able to achieve for 
you to be able to make more money, I think is extremely unethical and it really shouldn't even be allowed. And, and I'm wondering, I'm curious if there are going to be any any things that are going to be done. I know there's a lot going on and this is kind of the least of their worries, but when it comes to federal regulations, are they going to try to start cutting down on these these internet gurus who claim that they made X amount of money because they use that to sell people? Because of course, uh, no one, if it was legal, if they knew that the money that they were going to be receiving was going to be legal and it wasn't going to harm or hurt anyone would be 100% okay with getting $1 million made in 40 minutes. Who would turn that down if they knew that it wasn't going to hurt or injure anyone or if it wasn't going to cause um, them to be in trouble would turn it down. Almost all of us would say, sign me up, okay? So they know that them selling themselves this way on social media, it's going to hook people, most of them who are in more desperate situations. Most people who are doing okay, they're not investing in people like at the Ashley Graysons and the Joshua Graysons and, and things like that. They, they're just not going to do it. And so when I heard about this story, it just bothered me because like I said, I know that the majority of the money that they did make from those who did purchase what they had were people who were more vulnerable. And that's where my problem lies. So I'm happy that this was exposed. I'm happy that they got in trouble. I'm happy that they got arrested. I believe they've been released on bond. But they could possibly, if convicted, face up to 10 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. Now, they're still relatively young, so 10 years is not going to be much for them. It should be longer, even though the people that they were attempting to have taken out did not, thankfully, get touched. But what if it did happen? And they're, and, and they're just going to get a 10-year slap on the wrist and a $250,000 fine? That's nothing in my personal opinion. So again, I just wanted to talk about this briefly. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm going to put links to Chronicle Speaks and if I can find it, Naked Knight's video from months ago talking about this alleged plot to take these people out for exposing them or talking about them, <laughs> okay? But this is absolutely crazy. I'm going to follow this story and see what comes of it. And I'll give updates as they come about. So guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for liking and subscribing. I'm Beth, just being beautifully honest. So until the next time, I just wanted to keep it brief, beautiful. And now I'm going to say bye.